Amen. I'd like to ask you to please find your way to your seats. Thank you so much as we prepare to start our worship service this morning. Everyone glad to be here today? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? All right, clap your hands if you're happy to be in the house of the Lord today. I don't know about you, but I'm happy to be in the service once again. So happy to be here to praise the Lord. Thank you all for being here. I'd like to ask if you could please uh, silence your cell phones or turn them off, not to disrupt our service today. We're here to bless and praise the Lord. Amen. And we're going to ask our men's choir to come now and praise and sing praise with us. So join in, lift your hands, clap, and give the Lord some love. Amen. Amen. It's in the hands of the men's choir. Everybody stand, please. Pass me not, oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Do not 
not pass me by. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. I just thank you the days of my life. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I just thank you all the days of my life. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I just thank you all the days of my life. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I just thank you all the days of my life. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. And I just thank you all the days of my life. Just thank you all day, someone alive. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I just thank you all the days of my life. When I was lost, Lord. John 4, 19 through 26. It's so good to see so many people out today. It's really a blessing. John 4, 19 through 26. It says, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. 
Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye shall worship, ye know not, ye worship, ye know not what we know. What we worship is for salvation is of the Jews. For the hour cometh and is now when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said unto him, I know the Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Blessed are those who hide God's word in their hearts. Let's go before the Lord prayer. Father God, we just come before you today. Just thank you, Father. We don't have enough time to thank you properly, Father, for all that you do, Father. You are just great, Father God. Father, we just thank you for bringing us out of the darkness into your light, Father, changing us from sinners to saints through what Christ has done on the cross, Father. We just give you praise for that this morning, Father God. Father God, we we lift up our sins before you, Father. We know we're being sanctified, but in the process, we still sin, Father God. So we just lift up our sins before you and ask you to forgive us, Father, and cleanse us, Father. Help us to walk in a way that gives you the glory, Father God. I lift up a all the members of this church body and our pastor and his wife, and just ask that you continually draw us near, Father God. Continually teach us your ways, Father, as you teach us, Father. Help us have humble, submissive hearts where we learn to walk in obedience, Father, in a manner that's pleasing to you. We pray that you are, our, our worship is pleasing to you today, Father God. We lift up our sick and shut-in, Father, to no one heals like you heal, Father God. You're a great healer, Father. You're a provider that no one can match, Father God. We just thank you for your provision, Father God, today. You are a protector, Father God. We thank you for your protection, Father. We just thank you for all the things that you do, Father, because you are a source of every good thing, Father. Without you, we would be lost, Father God. But, Father God, I just lift up the man of God today who uh, is going to bring the word. I just ask that you use him mightily, Father, and that you just prepare our hearts today, Father, to receive it, Father, and be able to put it in the act, Father. And we'll just give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Good morning, Progressive. Good morning. Good morning. Say that again. Say that again. Say good morning. You know, isn't God good? When I look at you guys, I'm so, it's so pleased. And if you have any doubts what grace and mercy is, just look to your right and look to your left. Look at where we are this morning. Your grace and mercy poured me through. And I'm living this moment because of you I want to thank you and praise you too for it's your grace and mercy brought me brought me through come on choir with me your grace and mercy brought me through and I'm living this moment 
because of you. All right now. I want to thank you and praise you too. For it was your grace and mercy that brought me through. Lord, I want to thank you for saving a, a wretch like me so I can tell the world, tell the world that salvation is free. I know there were times when I, I just wouldn't do right. But you, you watched over me. Yes, you did. Yes, you did, Lord. By day and by night, it was your grace. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm living, I'm living this moment all because of you. Lord, I want to, I want to thank you, Lord, and I want to praise you, too, because it was your grace and mercy that brought me, what's most important, you see, justice demanded that I must die but it was your grace and your mercy that said oh no oh no I've already paid the price you see I once was blind but now I see that it was your grace and mercy Yes, it came, it came and uh, rescued me. Your grace, your precious grace and mercy. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm living this moment because of you. Lord, I want to. I want to thank you, Jesus. I want to lift you up and praise you. Because it was your grace and mercy that brought me through. One more time. Your grace and mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Your grace and mercy brought me through. Yes. And I'm living this moment because of you Lord I want to I want to thank you Jesus and praise you too it was your grace and mercy I said it was your grace and mercy your and mercy that brought me Oh, grateful, 
a mighty great foe. Yeah, the Lord has spared me. Yes, he has. Another day, yes, I'm so grateful, I'm mighty grateful, mm, he has always, yes. My joy in sorrow He's been my hope Yes For tomorrow Oh, he's been my shelter again I'm so grateful I'm mighty grateful yes I am the Lord has spared me yes he did another day Yes, I'm so grateful, I'm mighty grateful, mm-hmm. for he has always, yeah, he's made a way. joy and sorrow he's been my hope for tomorrow oh he's been my shelter yes in the time Yeah, and that's why I'm great. 
grateful, so grateful to thee. I'm grateful. I'm mighty grateful. Let's do this one more time. Oh, you can talk about me just as much as you please. You know, the more you talk, I'm gonna stay on my knee because the Lord has been mighty good to me. Hey, and that's why I'm grateful, so grateful to thee. Yes, I'm on my way up and I can't turn around. You know I'm on my way up to a higher ground. Oh, the Lord has been mighty good to me. Oh, that's why I'm grateful. Yes, so grateful to thee. I'm grateful. I'm mighty grateful. Amen. We're grateful today. Amen. You got to been through something to sing that song, huh? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I can feel that one. I've been through something. The Lord has been there. Praise the Lord, saints. Good morning. Glad that everyone is here today. Here at Progressive Missionary Baptist Church of Berkeley, we teach and preach the Bible. Amen. And we pledge our allegiance to the Bible. So if you would please stand. As we say, our pledge, say it with me together. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. I will read it to be wise, practice it to be holy, and believe it to be saved. Amen. Please remain standing. Our text today comes from the uh, daily scripture. We were in John chapter 4. And we're going to have, have two scriptures to highlight out of that. John 4, 23 and 24. Amen. Yeah. And Jesus is speaking and Jesus says... But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. So glad to see everyone here today. I wanted to say thank you all for coming out to the house of the Lord today. I want to say thank you and welcome to all those who are viewing this online. And uh, I just want to first start off by saying I thank God for saving me. I give honor to God for saving me and waking me up to see another day. I want to thank Pastor Stucky for giving me another opportunity once again to stand before you. I'd like to thank my wife, Felicia, for her continued prayers and love and support. This message today is directed to Christians, to All the right. church. And I simply titled this message, The True Worshiper. Yeah. See, we as human beings, um, we are instinctively worshiping creatures. You know, we worship instinctively. We can't seem not to worship something because we were created for such. And uh, that great Roman philosopher and scholar Cicero, uh, back in the first century BC, he observed and he stated that religion, regardless of its form, is a universal trait of mankind. Yeah, 
So we can't get away from this, from worshiping. We are going to worship something or someone. Amen? So who are you worshiping? What are you worshiping? Yeah. You see, these questions arise from this. And so whom and how shall we worship? But most importantly, will we be true worshipers or false worshipers? See, first we need to define what we mean when we say worship. Yeah. What do we mean when we say worship? Uh, some would say that worship is showing um, reverence and adoration uh, for a deity by honoring that deity uh, with some religious rituals or rites. Okay. Uh, but a more accurate definition of worship could be described as um, the art of losing one's self in the adoration of another. The art of you lose yourself in how much you adore something or lift something up. And by that definition, we can clearly see that many acts of worship that people perform have nothing to do with God. Yeah, because people worship all kinds of things. People worship music artists, rock stars and rap stars, and uh, they worship athletes and actors and all other type of celebrities. They are enamored by them. If they get a chance to meet them, they're starstruck. You know, they lose themselves in the adoration of their fame, in adoration of their wealth and their power. And the truth be told, there are many Christians who practice idolatry by their worship of someone or something other than God. Yeah. See, throughout the Bible, godly worship was expressed in a variety of different ways. They would, you know, build altars. They would offer sacrifices on the altars. Uh, they pray, sing, dance. See, biblically, the worship of God, biblically, the worship of God is equated with service and humility. Yeah. In fact, God uses the phrase work, uh, worship and serve often in the Bible, when he's referring to people's allegiance to him or to an idol. Yeah. De Deuteronomy eleven sixteen declares, it says, take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. There it is. Worship serve, serve, and worship together. Once again, in Luke chapter 4, verse 8, when Jesus is being tempted by the devil, Jesus declares, and Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen? So we have to understand that worship is connected and tied into service and humility. Amen? Yeah. True godly worship is a lifestyle that's connected to service and humility. Amen? It's not a single act that's confined to a building or an event or an action. See, because many people today equate uh, 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 worship with going to church. You know? People, oh, I'm going to worship. I'm going to worship. They equate uh, worship with going to church. Now, don't get me wrong. I want to encourage every single person here 
and every single person uh, viewing this online to come to church. Okay? So I'm not saying don't come to church because uh, corporate worship does occur when the body of Christ gathers. Amen? But not necessarily every time. Yeah. See, because some practices within the church, if not closely monitored, can take the focus off God and onto the worship itself. Yeah. Making that worship unbiblical. Yeah. For example, music. Everyone loves music. I haven't met one person. I haven't met anyone who doesn't like music, who doesn't like singing or some kind of song. But some Christians equate worship with the musical portion of the church service. Now, while music is a vital part of expressing our heart to God, if we're not careful, music itself can become the object of our worship. Yeah, when sensational music is the sum of our worship experience, we must ask ourselves, what exactly is being worshiped? Yeah, when musical styles and performances become more important than seeking glorifying God. All right. We are no longer worshiping God, but worshiping the experience. You've, had, you've heard that before. You know, you talk to people. I go to the church because the choir is good. I don't, you know, I don't really know who the pastor is, but they got a good choir. Boy, they get they they can they can get it going in that church. And they go and they think they worship because they had an emotional experience from the music. And they really have not worshiped. See, most people get praise and worship confused. All right. Praise and worship is not the same thing. Understanding the difference between praise and worship can bring a new depth to the way we honor the Lord. Right. Amen? See, throughout the Bible, it commands, praise ye the Lord. Throughout the Bible, and the, it's too, num too numerous for us to go through all of the scriptures. It would take the rest of the whole night. Right? But, but one of my favorites that talks about praise is Psalms, Psalm 150. If you have your Bible, turn. Psalm 150. Say amen when you find it. Psalm 150. You got it? And it declares, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon loud cymbals. Praise him upon high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Now don't that feel don't that feel good? Don't that sound good? Yeah, that's praising the Lord. See, praise is easy. Praise is easy. And it can be a part of worship, but worship goes beyond praise. Amen. See, praise is the joyful, thankful acknowledgement of all that God has done for us. Amen. See, praise is universal. It can be offered to others. We can give praise to the, to the young ladies when they sit up here and they, the group of ladies that sit up, the, the young women, the girls that sit up here and they sing, and they sing so wonderful, and we give them praise for that. 
when the choir sings, we praise the choir for those things. We give praise to our family members and our loved ones. We give praise to our favorite performers, to our athletes. Yeah. Yeah, we give praise to them. We walk around with their jerseys on. Man, we, we buy their albums. We, 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 we give them praise. See, praise does not require anything of us. It is merely the truthful acknowledgement of a right or good act of another. Amen? But worship, worship, however, comes from a different place within our spirit. Worship should be reserved for God alone. Amen? See, praise is easy. Worship is not. Worship gets to the heart of who we are. Amen? To truly worship God, we must let go of our self-worship. We must be willing to humble ourselves before God, surrender every part of our lives to his control, and adore him for who he is, not just for what he has done. Amen? Yeah. I'm going to say that again. True worship of God. To truly worship God, we must let go of our selfishness, of our arrogance, of our self-worship. And we must be willing to humble ourselves before God. And here it is, surrender every part of our life to his control. Amen. And adore him for who he is, not just for what he has done. And he's done great things for all of us. But we worship him before because of who he is. See, worship is a lifestyle, not just an occasional activity. Amen? And Jesus declared in the scripture we're just reading that Jesus said the Father is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? See, when the Bible mentions worship, different from praise, when the Bible mentions worship, we read verses uh, like Psalm 96, 9, that declares, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Yeah. We read scriptures uh, like Psalm 95, 6, that says, come, let us worship and bow down. Yeah. See, uh, uh, worship is coupled with the act of bowing and kneeling which shows humility. There's a reason why we bow our heads when we pray. We're showing our humility. Yeah, see, and it's through true worship that we invite the Holy Ghost to speak to us. Yeah. It's through true worship we invite the Holy Ghost to convict us, yeah. to change us, to comfort us. It's through true worship. See, uh, through true worship, we realign our priorities with God's priorities and acknowledge him as the rightful Lord of our life. Amen? Worship is an attitude of the heart. See, because people can put on all kind of airs on the outside. And they can look holy. And they can talk holy. And they can do all of this stuff and all this and everything on the outside. But God sees the heart. Amen. And he desires and he deserves our sincere, heartfelt praise. Amen. Yeah, a, a, another unbiblical worship practice in the church that can take the focus of God is personal freedom of expression. Well, this is a big one. Yeah. Personal freedom of expression. You know, we thank God. We thank God we can clap our hands. We thank God that we can raise our hands. We are thankful that we can shout 
Hallelujah. We are thankful that we can dance for the Lord and we can shout to the glory of God. But when we become more focused on the outward display of worship, it becomes unbiblical. We've all seen it. Many of you have seen it. I know I've experienced it before. You know, you've been in the service and the music is going and somebody gets up. They take off running. You seen that? They start running up and down the thing, running around, flailing in their arms, falling out. All this speaking in tongues. Yeah, they start, they start falling all over, screaming. Yeah. And when that happens in the corporate worship, it has shifted from worshiping God into a contest. Contest who can shout the best. Contest, you know, who who you know who who can who can uh speak in tongues the best. Yeah. And before you know it, worship has become a form of humiliating, irreverent amusement. Yeah. See, scripture never endorses chaos as a part of corporate gathering. Amen. In fact, Paul chastises the Corinthians for allowing their services to get out of control. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians 14, verses 26 through 33, and verse 40. Say amen when you find it. And it says, how is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you has a song, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation, let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by count by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak two or three, and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, and in all churches of the saints. And then down in 40, it says, let all things be done decently and in order. Yeah. See, Paul reminds us that the church, that everything, including your personal freedom of worship, must be done decently and in order. So when you're in these places and people, oh, uh, I got the spirit and I just can't hold it. That's not what scripture says. Scripture says that the spirit is subject to the prophet. See, people want to want to take away from worshiping God. See, and then another thing is the dancing. Dancing in the church. Yeah. Now, dancing is mentioned on many occasions in scripture. Amen. However, dancing is not always presented in a positive light in the Bible. Exodus 32, 19 declares, says, when Moses approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, his anger burned and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. Yeah. And this occasion, the dancing was part of a wicked idolatrous throughout. Yeah. So dancing in the church is good. 
and it's a mode of expression, but you have to be careful because it can be used for good or for evil. Yeah, it can be used for good. And then in 2 Samuel 6, uh, 6, 16, it declares that David was leaping and dancing before the Lord. In Psalm 30, 11, it said, you turn my wailing into dancing. Psalm 149, 3 declares, let them praise his name with dancing. Amen. So I want you to know you can dance, young people. You can dance. Oh, people, you can dance. Christians can and should utilize dance as they do any other art form, such as music or painting or drama, if, if the dancing is worshipful, God focused, and praiseworthy. It, it can have a proper place in the worship service. And when practiced in this way, dancing in the church is beautiful. It's a beautiful art form and that can communicate truth, bringing glory to God and edifying others. See, because the church dance don't look like the world is dance now. You ain't got no hip gyrations and no thrusts. And... Not in the church, that ain't no holy dance. Okay? It is a completely different dance. Amen? See, when we are in this scripture and we are exalting the truth of scripture, we are personally losing ourselves in the adoration of God. And we are in the scripture, we are engaging in true worship, whether we are in a crowded church or if we're in the car by ourselves. Yeah. We are worshiping God. I'm coming to my close here. One scripture here. Turn with me to Philippians 3, 3. Amen? Mm -hmm. Philippians 3, 3. And it declares, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Amen. Meaning that true worship comes from those who have been saved and have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and have the Holy Spirit in their hearts we don't put our confidence in this flesh we worship god in the spirit and this is where true worship comes from see the bible reveals that god is pleased only by the worship of those who approach him through jesus christ amen since he and he alone is the one mediator between God and man, according to 1 Timothy 2 and 5. Yeah. See, it's a startling and sad fact. According to the latest 2022 State of Theology survey that has been conducted by R.C. Sproul's Ligonier Ministries, it revealed that 56% of U.S. evangelicals, that's Christians, believe that God accepts the worship of all religions. Isn't that sad? 56% of all Christians in America believe that God uh, welcomes, accepts worship from all religions. Yeah, I want you to know if you're here today, if you're watching this and you're a Christian, I want you to know that God only accepts worship through Jesus Christ. Yeah. I know you might have a friend or some people that you know, and they might be Islamic or they might be Hindu or they might be Buddhist or, you know, or, or they might be Sikh or they might be other uh, faith or Jewish or whatever. And, and you like them and they're good people. And they and, and they they say they pray and they believe God, but you have to understand that it's only through Jesus that God's going to accept prayer, is going to accept worship. 
See, this is proof that many Christians are not taught correctly. And they do not sit under any proper orthodox Christian preaching. 56%. That blows me away. See, I want to give an invitation. I want to give an invitation to all that are here, all that are viewing this online, and anyone that hears this. You know, if you want to be a true worshiper, you must come to Jesus. Man, you must come to Jesus. Jesus declared, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Now, you might be a good person. You might be a good person, you know, a law abiding citizen. You might be faithful to your wife or faithful to your husband or to your family. You might be a great citizen. You, you know, pay your taxes. You might even attend a church every now and again or go to a mosque or, or go to a temple or, or, or go to a synagogue. You know, you're, you're a good person. You know, and, and you, know, you might even have a general belief in God. You might be a, a real spiritual person and you believe in God and you know wrong from right. You don't, you don't ever really do anything bad to anyone. And you, you know, you pray. You may pray and, and you think that you're worshiping God. But you're not worshiping God the right way. See, for worship to be correct, it has to be biblical. It must be in submission to the doctrine of Christ. Amen? The doctrine of Christ. Second John 1 9 declares whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both father and son. Amen? See, meaning, the doctrine of Christ is that, meaning that, that if you do not repent, if you do not accept, agree, surrender, believe the true teaching that Jesus is God incarnate in the flesh, born to the virgin, lived a, sing, a sinless life, who gave his life on the cross as payment for your sin, died and rose from death, freeing all who would ever believe in him, freeing them from eternal death freeing them from separation from God, freeing them from eternally burning in the lake of fire, which is the second death. If you do not live and believe the doctrine of Christ, you do not have God. I don't care how good you are. We all know people like that. I know some people, there's some, there's, there's some lovely people. They're very nice and they're very, they're religious and they're very faithful to what they believe and, and they're good people. Yeah, but they don't have God because they don't come to Christ. They won't believe the teaching because first of all, a lot of times they haven't been told about it. Right? Yeah. I want to give invitation to you. This is your opportunity. You may be a church member. You might come here. But this is your opportunity to be a true worshiper. Are you a true worshiper? Who do you worship? Who is it that you adore? 
Who is it? Is it Jesus? Or is it your wife? Is it Jesus? <laughs> or is it your husband? Is it Jesus or is it your child? Is it Jesus? Or is it that beautiful, handsome actor on TV? Who is it that you worship? This is your opportunity to get it right. I know you want to live right. I know you want to do good. There are people that want to do good. And they think they're living right. And they think that they're worshiping God. But you have to come to Jesus. He's the only way. I don't want you to be lost. I don't want you to be lost. I don't want you to grow up in church all your life and miss it. Grow up in church all your life and you know all the sayings and you hear the scriptures taught, but you never surrendered in your heart and you think that you're worshiping God. And he'd say, I don't know you. This is your opportunity to get it right with God so that you can be a true worshiper of God. And you can know that you have decided to follow Jesus. This is the invitation time. Time for you to make the decision. Because I want you to know that there's room at the cross. <laughs> There's room. That song, there is room at the cross for you. There is room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there is still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. Why don't you come to the Lord? And you can be a true worshiper. And you can experience the joy. You can really experience the love. You can experience the freedom and the peace that Jesus gives us. This is an invitation to you now. If you would please just come. If you will please just come to Jesus. You can be a true worshiper. Think of the brothers. Jesus is tenderly calling the home, calling today, calling today. Why from the sunshine of low will thy roam? Father and father away, yes, calling today, calling today, Jesus is calling. Calling today, calling today, Jesus is calling, he's tenderly calling today.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I will be reading your announcements for today. Okay. Uh, so we want to keep in the, the following in prayer. Shirley and Marvin Reynolds' grandson, Judah, who is, who is recovering from a respiratory infection. Um, our sister, Rochelle Walker, who was hospitalized this weekend for a respiratory and viral virus and asthma. And we also will pray for Jerry Williams and her family on the passing of her brother, William Duke. Please continue to pray for our sick and shut-in and for those who have experienced death in their family. Also today is Sister Stucky's birthday. I told her she's celebrating a milestone, but I won't tell you which. <laughs> but we want to praise God and wish her a happy birthday today. Uh, the mission team will be distributing food bags at the Bay Area Rescue Mission on Tuesday, November the 22nd, from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Our own ministers, Ron Ellis and Daryl Price, will be sharing a gospel message. Members of all ages are welcome to join us. Prior registration requires, so please respond as soon as possible. For more information, contact Natalie Johnson or Stia Kamen. The women's ministry will be facilitating a church-wide community outreach project on Friday, December the 9th and Saturday, December the 10th. The ministry is looking for volunteers to help with this special project. More information about this event and volunteer sign-up for it will be located at the church exit at the door up here. And the Home Builders Ministry is facilitating a study, His Needs and Her Needs, a step-by-step -step lesson on biblical and practical principles for married and engaged couples. There's a free ebook available on the church website we are encouraging couples to take the His Needs and Her Needs questionnaire before the next Home Builders meeting on Friday, December the 2nd at 7 p.m. Also, encourage your married friends and families to visit the church website. Scroll down and click on the Home Builders Ministry for invaluable resources. This includes our service and announcements. And I think Pastor Stucky has a special presentation. Is Marcella here? All right. Uh, Marcella is coming uh, along with her. Is it the sister? Or who? Okay. Well, this is Marcella. She is the niece of our late sister Alma Hassan. And she has a presentation to make at this time. Uh, good evening, church. I am so glad to be here, me and my daughter, uh, to come once again to my auntie's um, church home. As you all knew, this was her church home. As I was listening to the message that was brought by um, the associate minister, I, was, I know she always was sitting in that spot over there, and my heart uh, got heavy. But I know for assurance that she was with the Lord, and she, she she's happy. And once again, from me and my family, we want to thank you guys again for loving her for so many years that she was here, and we are really appreciated. But I'm here to present something to uh, Sister Stucky, because I know my auntie and Sister Stucky's birthdays are close together. So Sister Stucky, this is for you, sweetheart. From our family to you, because you're still our family. Even though she's not here, even though she's not here, we're still here with you, and we love you. May I uh, read what's on here so the church and everybody can see? It? And it said. It says, happy 90th birthday to Sister Stucky from Alma Hassan and family, November 20, 2022. 
Thank you so very much. All right. We're not waiting. Yeah, we're just about it. We, 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 we got something to say. You say it in the night. Oh, I'm so sorry, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Hassan and Brother Hassan had us for dinner nearly every Sunday. See, she she lived close here. Uh -huh. And she made peach cobbler for study every time we had dinner there. That's so sweet. Thank you for letting me say this. I didn't want y'all to know how old I was. <laughs> you know, you know, I don't look that age. I don't think 90 years. I think 40. Kay, Kay took this, I uh, don't tell my age from her mother. Uh, we call her Nana, neither tell. She never would tell her age. And so Kay said, I'm not going to tell her my age. <laughs> but, but it's on the plaque. <laughs> Thank you all for coming from San Diego. I love San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to have the benediction by our speaker. And then I want to commend him for preaching the word. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. If we all can please stand. Let us sing happy birthday to Sister Stacky. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Sister Stacky. Happy birthday. I remain standing for the benediction. Amen. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. The grace of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You're dismissed.